We live in a time where the flow of information is constant, with competing voices in crowded spaces, where old school thoughts meet new school ideas. We are constantly having to recreate ourselves. To understand these identities, we need to decipher the culture. This is unconventional. This, this is, is Lounge Academics. Academics. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. kid. Look, How are you man, doing, man? Man's looking serious where I see man just come up, man. <laughs> <laughs> I see man just appear, man's just like that, bro. That, it shocked me. I couldn't see. I couldn't see the video. So like, right? <laughs> that was good my confused see you, face. Dude. Love my brother. Good bro? to see you too, man. I'm good, man. I'm blessed, man. No complaints oh, over here. Good. Of course, man. So, um, obviously, you, you know the drill. Um, five, I think you've listened to a couple of these still. You've tuned in to some of our five minutes of disrupt. So, I think I you've got an have. idea of the format anyway and what we do and stuff. Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, um, what I'm going to do, as I'm talking to you, I'm just connecting with other people as well to let them know that we're online and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, to share and let people know. And what we'll do is um, we'll get into it, find out a little bit more about yourself, sir. Um, so I know who you are. I know what you're involved in or what you're doing, but it'll be good for other people also to find out a bit more um, about mm -hmm. what you're on and, and what's happening as well for too much info, yeah? So, All right. Right. So how are you feeling? You cool? You good? I'm good, man. Kinda... I'm good. I'm good. good, yeah? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is, um, without further ado, we'll just let you say a little bit about who you are, what you're doing that, and we'll give you your five minutes, bro, to do your thing, and then we'll have a conversation, yeah, about it, All yeah? Right. All right, All right. Go for it, chaps. Go, bro. All right. Um, love to everyone. Um, as as KJ said, um, my name is Chucks. Chucks. Some people call me Chucks. Some people call me Chucks. Um, I am, as he, well, he kind of made it sound very grand, but yes, I am the, um, I'm the founder. <laughs> I'm the founder. I'm the host. Um, managing director, all them good titles um, of of a media platform called Too Much Information. Um, our main focus at the moment is on a podcast. It's a weekly podcast that comes out every week on a Friday, um, nine o'clock in the morning. Depending on the length of the podcast that we film, sometimes we break it up into parts. So um, usually it's one part a day. So this one that's coming out this Friday. It's likely to be four parts because it was a really long conversation um, with another podcast host, actually. He's just started a podcast called um, Honestly, Mate. But um, this guy, actually, um, he's partially blind, um, but his life has been full of topsy-turvy roller coaster situations. So it's very in-depth. Um, we, we ended up touching on things like... Um, men and mental health and these kind of things so um, as a platform uh, the general ethos of the platform is to use people's stories of their life and their experiences to enable people to um, explore their own lives and improve their own situations and also sometimes it's not always deadly serious sometimes it is light-hearted um, yeah. me as a person um, I am somebody who I'd like to say I've got an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, I decided to wear my, I don't know if you can see it, I decided to wear my Nipsey Hustle t shirt um, <laughs> yeah. because, you know, his, I like his ethos. His ethos was building up the community around him, having come from uh, a maybe a, a less positive side of life. Um, and I just, I just like that ethos. I like that, um, I like the moves, I like the moves that he made in actually. Um, buying property in his area and putting people on and um, employing p people from the community that he grew up in, which I I um, I endeavour to achieve later on in my um, journey. Um, what else can I tell you about myself? Um, I was I'm I'm a married man. I've got a, my first child is on the way. Um, having a daughter. Yeah. So yeah, I I'm see that big result, sir. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, su I'm super. I'm super excited about that. Um, so yeah, that was another thing that I've done on the podcast. I did a, a series on fatherhood, where which you were a part of, yeah. um, where I spoke to spoke to fathers just to, and also I spoke to um, an amazing woman that was raised by a single black father, um, and just just to kind of get.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you, bro. Yeah? All right, cool. So, yeah. um, yeah, so, yeah, so that, that that's kind of um, another avenue that I use when it comes to the podcast. I like to kind of um, ask the questions that a normal person would ask. I like to have conversations. Um, I use, I tell people all the time I'm a habitual oversharer. So I, I almost <laughs> class myself. <laughs> so I almost class share, myself. I love that. Yeah. yeah. So I almost class myself as like the perfect podcast guest because there ain't nothing really that's off the table. Um, you have to kind of tell me to stop talking. Um, and that's being, obviously I'm early on in the podcast journey. Um, we've just, this put this episode is coming out on Fridays, episode 21. Um, so it's still early days. But I do, I do, I'm, I'm really excited about where it can take me, um, what conversations, how important, I, and one of the hashtags that we use um, is a custodian of stories. So that is what I would class myself as, and that is what I class the platform as. We are a place where people can share their story and people can view that story and pick what they will from it to improve their situation. Um, I don't know how much of the five minutes I've got left, but just one last thing I would say yeah. is that um, I spoke to an auntie that I haven't spoken to since my wedding, to be fair. Um, okay. And she, I, I got a, she spoke, and um, she was saying she was really impressed with the podcast. And um, I was, you know, obviously you're excited. This one, it's your auntie that's known you from before you were born, kind of thing. So she was just saying that how she broke it down was really kind of she articulated what. I want to say, which is that it gives people, especially of the older generation, um, but the younger generation as well, the, it, it makes them aware of the fact that their experience is, is not just theirs. A lot of people don't share their story because they're worried about how they're going to be judged or perceived by other people. And what I hope my platform is able to do is to show that a lot of the stories that people tell themselves in their head is not exclusively theirs and is not something that they will be judged for. It is a, we are, we are, we are much more similar than we are different. And um, so that's, that's kind of, um, that was a beautiful thing for me to hear, especially from an elder in the community. And um, yeah, how much more time have I got? Yeah, no, I'm just, bro. You know, if you're ready to get into this, I am, yeah, man, because yeah, there's man, a lot there, man, what you're saying. And I think, you know, the comments that you've made, like the most, the last comment that you just made about your auntie, what does it mean for you to kind of hear that, though? That that idea of a shared, that their story and their experience is shared by others as well. Like, what, what does that mean for you? For me, it was, for me, it was something that kind of almost took my breath away because it's something I didn't really think about. Because what she was kind of articulating to me was that her generation was a generation that didn't say those things because they believed it was only them that had experienced. And she was speaking about negative experience, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. But she wasn't. She. They was. It wasn't something that they spoke to their friends about. It wasn't something that other people knew. It was just I don't know. Maybe I don't know. They're, they're experiencing their house. Maybe their parents, or maybe their. Um, mother or father or uncle or whatever experience it was that happened in their life, it was something that they kind of dealt with and held within themselves. And now, why I was saying that it led to, the, to a lesser degree is the younger generation, where we're in a generation where conversation is a bit more accepted, something that we we, we speak about a bit more. And um, it was it was a beautiful thing for me to hear that, especially for someone that I care about and love, that yeah. they they gained that from the experience and she ended up sharing things with me that you know you know how it is when you're when you're forever the forever the young one around yeah. the aunties and the uncles yeah. and when yeah. they're talking to you like you're you're actually a grown-up at last it's a good feeling yeah. you know of course yeah <laughs> that you can sit down and reason on a level yeah, and talk and share. Share. yeah. yeah. exactly and share exactly you understand. That. and i think mm -hmm. for me that's something that i've definitely seen from your platform so from what i've seen definitely there's this what I really like about the way that you hold your, your interviews, being a, a man that's been involved and been on the receiving end myself and have been involved mm -hmm. in the platform, is the way yeah. that there is kind of almost like, there's this sharing of knowledge, you know, um, between mm -hmm. yourself as the host 
um, interviewer, however you want to put it, with obviously yeah. myself as the guest. And I feel that you're always open and honest. And it's like a, it's like a conversation, to be fair, mm -hmm. when I'm listening to you reasoning and talking. And that's something that I've been really um, taken back by. Yeah, totally. Bob's was that Bob in in well into the tour, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. wise words from yes. Auntie, yeah, respect. Love Bobby. Do you know what I mean? And I think at the end of the day, um, for me, from the observations that I've seen of you, that, that transparency and that authenticity of who you are just comes across mm -hmm. and shines brightly. Yeah, that's yeah. Beautiful, thank you, man. Thank no, you. No, totally, man. And I just wanted to know, in terms of your inspirations, what um what really inspired you to start on this journey of content creation and creating content and podcasts and that? Where did that come from? Oh, right. okay. Um, the first, because I've got, there's another platform that I started, which kind of is on the back burner at the moment, mm -hmm. um, which is more, it, that's, that was the original um, platform, which was kind of just more the conventional um, podcast platform that is yeah. prevalent at the moment, which is, you know, friends sitting around a table kind of yeah. talking about current Chatting. affairs, yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. stories and that kind of thing. So that was the original thought. And then it just happened that the two friends that I was doing it with, one of them had a, had a baby on the way. Um, okay. Another one was going through whatever they were going through. So it just couldn't really happen. At the, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm kind of impatient. So it's something that I kind <laughs> of wanted to... So because yeah. it wasn't moving at the speed I wanted it to move at, I was just like, all right, let's just put that on the back burner and let me find a way that I can be in control of creating content, right? Mm. And then I, then I saw on YouTube, there was a, a, a channel on YouTube called Soft White Underbelly that I saw. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah, um, yeah, I have. It's, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, so this guy goes on Skid Row in California and he just, how I viewed it, I thought he was a bit of a, a bit of a wrong one, if I'm honest. He just goes yeah. there and he gives them, gives them $50 and a packet of cigarettes and tells them to tell their, their whole, and I, I don't know the backstory, maybe he gets them to go see counsellors or whatever, but I saw that and some of the stories touched my heart. I'm not a person that cries okay. near enough ever. And one of the stories touched me where I nearly had a tear in my eye and I was like, no, nah, this is serious. His thing's very artistic. He's a photographer by trade. And so this is a very, brother talking to real people, isn't it? Just out real there. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Like people that are homeless and yeah. gang members, ex-gang members and drug dealers and drug takers and all these kind of, just people that are, he goes to Skid Row. So um, yeah. it was a platform that really kind of intrigued me. But my, my issue with it was that... Um, I thought, okay, there's not one of, there's not something like this in England. But my issue was that I felt like he was taking advantage of people. And I didn't want to, I wanted to create a platform that wasn't just showing negative stories and negative images. And not even just on a racial um, thing, just generally of people in bad situations. And obviously I know there is a reason, you can see, but you can hear and see bad things and they can um, help you because that's, underlying the, the, the ethos of, the, of my platform. But my thing was that I wanted to find a way to speak to people that maybe didn't have the craziest life ever. Like yeah. they, haven't, they haven't been hung out of a window by their parents or they, do you know what I mean? That, yeah. that not, doesn't, and if they have, yeah, well, I'll speak to you too and I'll yeah, learn something yeah. from that too. But yeah. I, I wanted to speak to all, to, all, all types of people and just have a direct conversation. I don't want people to necessarily incriminate themselves. I'm not like yeah. Vlad from... Uh, Vlad, you know I mean? I'm not, I'm yeah, not, Vlad TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but, what, yeah. but I did pick, what I did pick from Vlad was very much that I wanted to we kind of be Vlad, behind the camera. Us, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I did <laughs> <laughs> just got to say that we both got platforms that we love man so don't yeah love lad love man we love what you do yeah. but maybe a bit unethical bro that's what we'll say some so, of the, bro, some of the stuff some yeah. of the straight up the caveat yeah I, 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 I was quick but um, what I did take from him was that I, I decided I, I wanted to kind of be have the conversation but I'm behind the camera so yeah. there's only a few instances on the episodes where I'm in front of the camera and that was yeah. either because because the person that I was interviewing was nervous and they felt more comfortable with me there. Or for the first episode that I decided to do, um, I made, I, I just, I, I was the person that was the guest and I wanted to kind of um, be, in order for me to ask people uncomfortable questions yeah. and almost make somebody feel like, oh, these are my, I, I want to I get to the point where I'm asking questions that people 
maybe have never been asked before or never thought they would be asked yeah. by somebody who they maybe haven't known for 12, 10, 20 years, right? So um, how, in, order, how, in order to do that, go on. So how does your stuff, like in terms of what you're doing, because you spoke about this other guy, you know, the software underbelly and all that, that yeah. other um, platform. How, how do you... Like, and it sounds to me, what you were connecting with there is that that brother was exploiting people, basically. It's kind of like exploiting mm -hmm. their insecurities, the things that they've been through for the purposes of entertainment. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they're, putting, they're being put yeah. up on the platform and getting paid a little mm -hmm. change for that, right? Um, yeah. But, you know, with yourself, how would you say um, that differs in terms of your, your experience and your platform? What would you say is different? And is it, how do you toe the line because um, I think that would be a um, very fine yeah, line, you know? It is. It's a very fine line. And it is, it's very much... I think the thing that... The main thing that I think I um, try and do is to not research the person. So I'm, okay. I'm not necessarily going in with an agenda. I'm, it's a very free-flowing conversation. Um, I... Some of the, a lot of the people I do know, like yourself, I, I knew before yeah. before you came onto yeah. the platform, um, and there were maybe some things that I knew, but my intention is not to trip you up. Also, what I do is I send the format to everybody before they do it, and I, I make say, sure that they're aware. Go on. I love that. I'm certain, to, but I love that, man. I, I have to say. Um, your integrity to like in like to fidelity of of your craft and what you're doing. I love the way mm -hmm. that you set that up in in preparation for your guests when they come on. I think it's heavy the amount of due care and diligence that goes mm -hmm. into what people you, are willing to share and um, bring. Because you know when like you said, sharing people's stories that's a personal thing and it's a very fine line as to what people can share. But I think you handled that just brilliantly. But yeah, man, just wanted to just put that in there. No, I yeah. appreciate that. And I appreciate that. And I think that that is, that is um, part of the, as you said, how do I, how do I tell the line? How do I make sure that um, I'm not, I'm not going to mention his name again because now you've got me worried like he's actually going to sue me. But you know, like the kind of person that he's actually going <laughs> to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know the kind of person that's actually just gonna whatever it takes to get that clickbait headline, whatever it takes. Yeah. And I'm not a whatever it takes kind of person. I'm like whatever comes yeah. from the conversation person. That's what I'm. That's what I'm about. And I really wanna kind of. Um, that's that's the ethos I wanna continue through. Because obviously, as I said, it's early stages. But sure. even when that time does come. Um, <laughs> You know, we both got respected platforms. This is something that we in terms of, you know, creating content, interviewing people, hearing their stories, connecting with them, etc. How, how have you found this journey today in terms of navigating uh, your podcast, the whole content creation thing? How, how would you describe the journey? Um, okay, how I've, how I've found it, is um I've, it's it's definitely a process and i've yeah. i've seen an evolution i've seen an evolution in myself and i've seen an evolution in the platform um firstly with my yeah firstly with myself um i i'm seeing people say bad connection can you hear me can you hear it is that yes that said that yeah 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 all right um, yeah, so carry on. Yeah, go for it, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, cool. All right. Okay. So yeah, go for it, King. Yeah, so go for yeah. it. Go for it. Yeah. So, um, so what? I've, personally, I found that um, early on, it was I was very, um, what's the word? I don't. Maybe nervous is the right word. Nervous sure. to ask difficult questions and to push the envelope because it is like you said it's a it's a fine line like on one side of me i want to I'm, I'm i have to stay true to my truth which is that i don't want to um traumatize nobody i don't want to um make no one say something that they don't want to say or that they would regret sure. saying afterwards um but on the other side of that the the name of the the platform is too much information and the whole thing is about people sharing things that maybe they wouldn't normally share Sure. So I had to find a fine, it's a, as you said, a fine line 
in asking the right questions and being quiet as much as possible, which is really difficult for me because, as I said, I'm a chatterbox. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, yeah. So, that was so as far as me personally, um, I also was well, I had, a, I had a good friend of mine that actually was listening to the podcast and we, he would almost give me a bit of a dressing down after every episode and be like, no, because you do that. Look, when I was listening to it, I wanted to hear what they said about X, Y, Z. Why didn't you ask them why, what happened after that? Or why did this person leave? Or why did, you know what I mean? So it was kind yeah. of, it was almost like I got a, it was almost like a, a pathway into exploring what I, how I could um, evolve my conversation style yeah. when I'm talking to a guest. And as far as the platform is concerned, that's been, um, that's been a journey as well. Because when I first started, it was just very much like I record it um, and I put it out. Now it's very much like I'm learning to kind of edit it a little bit. And I'm not no professional editor, but I'm kind of breaking it down a bit. Yeah. I give, um, I put a little, a kind of, what's the word? Like it's almost like a, 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 a pain or something in between each section of the podcast where they're talking about different subjects to almost kind of give the viewer a bit of a roadmap through the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And which yeah. I find, yeah, which I find is helpful just because I know that I'm the only sort of mad person that will sit down and watch a three hour Joe Rogan podcast from start to finish. I know yeah. lots of people don't do that. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I kind of wanted to give them a, give them a, 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 a way of, kind of fast forward into a section that they're interested yeah. in. You know? and, and it's interesting because there's a thing with the podcast at the moment, and I know, I mean, podcasts traditionally were all, are audio recorded, often pre-recorded um, mm -hmm. pieces, yeah, of media. And now what we're seeing very clearly, I mean, I'm even doing it now, obviously I'm recording, I'm capturing audio from this kind of visual aspect that we have, right, through this conversation. Mm -hmm. And obviously... Um, where we look at YouTube channels, even particularly with our platform and with yours, I know there's that visual element to kind of the podcast as well. So mm -hmm. I think you see in different, it's really evolved and changed um, in a short time and podcasts are proper popular. If you was to give any tips as to kind of recommendations as to how, if people are starting out on this journey and doing their podcast, what would you be saying to them? Like in terms of like, the duration or type of format, what would you be saying to people that are coming out trying to do this? Uh, in a way, in, as far as like logistics of it, I would probably say I'm not the right person to ask purely because I'm super impulsive and reckless in that regard. So I'm like, <laughs> like when I, I first thought of the idea, yeah. yeah, now when I first thought of the idea, the, I, the first idea was for it to be um, 22 minutes long. Just for the, because my logo's got the two in it, I thought it would look good if they was all 22 minutes long and da 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 da. But like I said, I'm a chatterbox. So that even the first one, I think I, the first, the first one that I done with somebody else, it went over, it went to like 27 minutes and then I got it down to, then the second, the third one was like 24 minutes and then it just went hour and then it went hour and a half. <laughs> and then it was, so it was just like, it wasn't possible for me to even do yeah. that. So, yeah. Um, what I would say is um, do what feels right to you but I think the most important thing that I would say is to do like sure. my yeah. ethos is so do just it. do yeah. So, yeah. And, you don't, and you don't need much equipment you don't need a lot of stuff um, when I started I, did, I didn't spend much money at all you can, buy a, you can buy a mic on Amazon for 50 quid do you know yeah. what I mean you can, um, you, can, you can use your phone as a camera, if you want to do a visual podcast, sure. um, you can buy a decent camera secondhand from anywhere. If you want to, if you don't want to use your phone, you want to buy a decent cap, you know? Yeah. So I would say, um, also as well, just get what you need bit by bit. So I didn't start. So with gradually everything. scale up, like start up yeah. and then gradually right. so scale the, up gradually. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. The first thing I did was get the microphone and then I got little bits and pieces. Then I got the light in and then I got little bits and pieces like that. Um, and yeah, as far as I say, duration and logistics of it, I think you'll, you'll, you'll work that out as you do. What I would say is um, make sure that you're present on social media, make sure that you promote your platform as best you can. And um, the 
the best advice that I've received that I'm still struggling with is building a team of people that are kind yeah. of bought into your vision. Um, just because, you know, maybe I'm a control freak. I don't think I am, but maybe I am. Um, but I like to move at a, a decent speed and I feel like I'm, I'm prone to being lackadaisical. So if I've yeah. got people around me that aren't on it like me, I can work under my own steam for a period of time, but that there'll be moments where I can hide from doing work and I don't want to, I don't want that. So now I'm at the stage where I'm actually just, that's why I've committed to doing one episode a week. Um, okay. So it's a, it's near, you might as well say it's a one man operation. I've got a graphic designer. I've got people yeah. that I use and I pay to do certain things. But as far as the platform, um, I host, I edit, I do most of the things that people see. And that, how do you manage that? Because you're talking about, I know, when you're doing something for so long, and I know I'm guilty of this, I can, I can relate to this as well, yeah? So when you've mm -hmm. been doing something and you're pretty much holding the platform in the many different roles that you yeah. hold, right? How, mm -hmm. when do you realise it's time to give up to, 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 to get a team? and to get certain people to come on board to help with the building. At what stage do you recognise that? Um, I think, I'm, I'm, I feel like, obviously, okay, because also as well, I'm, I've, I've, I've finished my degree in business management, I'm just waiting on results and all of those kind of things. Nice, and, man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting yeah, on a lot of things, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the things that I did learn was that you have to start your business in a way where it is possible to be scaled. So, that's why I gravitated towards Vlad's um, way of doing it. Because if you notice with him, he's not on camera. He's asking the questions, but not all of his interviews are done by him. Some of the interviews, he's got other people, other yeah. staff members that the, the, the whole, he's using the same cameras and visually it looks the same and it's still the same guests, but he doesn't have to be there. And I feel like for me, that's that's the stage where I've I've started the platform from, but I want to take the platform. I want to yeah. actually get the people to be able to do that. So ideally, what I would want to do is to be able to have somebody else, maybe another couple of people that yeah. maybe other places in London or other places in the country or yeah. the world even, and to be able to kind of pick up my brand and put it somewhere yeah. else, and and it, and it be able to um, flourish without my face necessarily yeah. being what yeah. people are buying into. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because like you say, it's not easy. Even with me now, you know, like as I said, I've got a baby on the way, I've got a wife. Um, like I might, if I've got a guest with somebody and I say I'm, I've committed to releasing an episode every Friday. So um, I, might not get a, I might not be able to get a guest until that can do it until the Thursday. So if I, if I do the interview on the Thursday, that means I have to be up to a silly yeah. o'clock editing in order yeah. to get it out for nine in the morning um and i think only one time it hasn't been able to happen but i got it out that day but it was a couple of hours late sure. um but yeah apart from that that's those are the kind of things that i feel like as soon as you as soon as i um decided to do that it was going to be once a week i had i realized that i needed a team of people and yeah, i'm that. still searching so if there's anyone out here that um, is interested Follow it, your boy. And what and what you're looking at? Are you and when you're saying in terms of a team, if you were to think about specific mm -hmm. roles, what are you looking for? Is this for other people that can produce content? Because like, is that because is that what you're looking for, or is it I, much I'm, wider I'm, than that? That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked it. So, um, I'm definitely looking for content creators. So I love to write. Um, I've got a website, um, too much information .co .uk. Um, so. I definitely want to have people that are writing blogs, word pieces, even art as in, um, I don't know, painting art or drawing or whatever, um, and have a platform to display that. So I'm definitely looking for physical content creators. I'm definitely looking for people with um, great ideas for subjects and topics okay, for topics. series of podcasts. And I'm also looking for people that can... Um, that are interested in hosting and their interest and then they have yeah. and and are willing to are willing to explore their network of people in order to kind of further and do the brand and be be yeah. be almost me 
for the brand in a different yeah. sphere because there are some people that even though I'd like to think I've got a pretty eclectic group of guests like the guy sure. I interviewed that's coming out on Friday like he's into fresh metal like yeah when I was there and he was listening to it I could, he was telling me like this tune is his favorite song and I could not understand one word <laughs> but when he like I'll yeah. tell you the truth yeah, like, and but yeah. he when he but he rewound it and sang sang the words in like a normal voice. But you couldn't, and yeah. The words I couldn't understand it, but the words were deep, so I kind of had a bit more of an understanding of why these people were banging their heads and getting into this music. Yeah. But I couldn't. I, I thought it was just noise that they was talking about killing this one or the devil yeah. this or that's what I thought it was. But this guy's that's talking it, about yeah. his heartbreak and his woman left him and this that, and I was like, right, it's pretty deep. Right. So. Yeah, so I'm, I love so that, I'm, man. I'm definitely, yeah. do you know what I mean? So I'm definitely looking for kind of um, content but, creators like that. Go on. But Chucks, don't that go against, like, because this podcasting, like, I don't know, like, for me, I've often seen, when I was looking to collaborate with people, because I'm a guy that likes to co-produce and collaborate, right? And mm -hmm. when I was um, speaking to a number of people that got their podcast platforms or whatever, there was this caginess around yeah. collaborating and this notion of, you know, being part of um, a bigger vision to collaborate with someone often was like a curse word in my experience, because I think we've mm -hmm. kind of been taught to some extent to this is my brand. I'm too much information. I'm lounge academics. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. it needs to coincide with this brand and have these colours and whatever. That's things that I've picked up on just through the journey that I've you. been on this as well. But um, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm totally down with what you're saying and I walk hand in hand mm -hmm. with that, man. I'm, we're, you, we're this synergy yeah. there. But I feel that's not often replicated or reflected amongst um, the masses out here that's doing it. I think, I think, it's, I think it's definitely about how you approach the conversation, I think. In this, what I mean by that is that if, um, like I say, if, I've, if there's somebody who is a, I don't know, a graphic designer, or maybe they do, I literally, I was watching, um, what's his name? Mike GLC on Instagram. Yeah. And he's got, he's got a, um, like a, what's the word? Like a, like a comic, a graphic novel, um, cartoon thing that he draws and writes and, like I was, I, I literally went on his YouTube channel and watched it, and I was like, "Right, this, I never knew you. I never knew that anybody from the ends or yeah. that looks like yeah. me was doing this kind of stuff." You yeah. Know? So obviously he's got his brand, and obviously he's got his direction where he wants to take it. And like sure. you say, I feel like if I was to come in and say, "All right, um, slap too much information on your team that you've been building for however long," and um, assimilate it into into my into my platform. Yeah, I think that is something that someone will kind of ooh, like almost shy away from. But if you say, "All right, cool, you do what you're doing as you are doing," but I, my platform is open for you to put your content on my platform yeah. as another avenue. It don't have to be exclusively there, but I just want to know that my, the people that come to my platform can see what you do. Sure. And I feel like yeah. that. I feel like that conversation is, that is an easier conversation. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's interesting. Yeah. And, I, and I'm finding, yeah, totally. And I feel, I think as a, and I say this generally speaking, I think it's something that we struggle with as content mm -hmm. creators, as podcasters, mm -hmm. as YouTubers or whatever. And there's that whole variation also of whether somebody's popping or not. Do you get what I mean? So... Uh, people want to check the followers and the algorithms and what, you know what I'm saying? So I wondered right. for yourself, like in terms of that journey, in terms of picking up guests and stuff, what has been kind of, the, what's influenced you to choose the guests that you've done and what, and on the flip side or mirroring that, what's then enticed them to come onto your platform to participate? Um, I think, I think, um, what's enticed them to come onto my platform yeah, a lot of the time um, yeah, is, my, yeah. is my winning personality and my dashing smile <laughs> yeah, yeah, I yeah, think that's yeah. what done it um, <laughs> yeah but, it goes a um, long in way all honest, bro in, a, in all honesty I do think that um, I've, I've called in favours don't get me yeah. wrong um, I've, I think a lot of people have kind of done it as a favour and then ended up gaining something from it um, I think when it comes to me me kind of searching out people what I've found yeah. as well is that um, 
there's one person I don't even know if he's in here now, but I'll shout him out. Sedri, he's called um, James Anderson. Um, okay. I don't know him from nowhere. I've never met him. I've never met him, but I think he saw an episode or he saw a clip that I put up, and we just started talking. And then all of a sudden, I would just see the pack. The podcast would be tagged in something, and I'll be like, "Wow, what's this?" I'll tag. He's tagged me in like under a video with some random something that happened or a Black Lives Matter protester. Sure. And he'll be like, he should be on your podcast. And I'll be like, right, for real. Yeah. Even, I because, I, because, I, because, I, because I don't, because I'm new to like the whole kind of internet, Instagram way of approaching people, it took that for me to then say, well, that is actually how, how else am I going to get people that I don't know? So, yeah. I, I literally approached, I approached the guy in the videos, it turned out to be his wife, who had commented under the video that he tagged me in. And then she got me in contact with the guy. And then, like, literally, we're going to do a podcast in a couple of weeks' time when his, like, his situation's a bit better. Um, but that that is kind of... Um, sometimes you get those people that come into your life and sure. kind of almost push you in the right direction, you know? And when it comes and, to choosing yeah. my guests... Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, go on, go on. Yeah, choosing your yeah. guests. Yeah. And when it, comes, when it comes to choosing my guests, it, there's, it's almost like a two-pronged thing because it started off with literally just being... All right, I'm, I've spoken to somebody, um, and I'm interested in what I like the person or I don't like the person. Even though I haven't interviewed anyone I don't like, but I would, I would love to. Sure. I want to interview Kate Hopkins at some point. I hate her guts, okay. but I want to talk to her. But um, yeah, so we, you might talk to somebody and you think, wow, this is an interesting person. I'm nosy, so I want to know why are you such a sick person, or why are you so successful, or why are you so um, able to remember, like I've got one of my friends that I interviewed, it's like he's able to remember every, like, minuscule details and dates and yeah. names yeah. and nothing so leaves his head. Like so, yeah. yeah, so I want, but this is the thing, then I want to know, I want to know, like, right, is this something in how you was raised? Was there certain things that you were taught or the way that you were disciplined or the way that you were whatever that kind of made you able to, or maybe you spent a lot of time by yourself and you focused on whatever, so I definitely wanted to kind of get into that side of things. So that's how I kind of chose those kind of people. And then the fatherhood series, that was a more kind of um, methodical approach. So when I decided okay. I wanted to, obviously I would found out my, my wife was going to have my child. And then I'm like, okay, I was raised with no father. So what do I do? Yeah. I'm panicking a little bit. I'm like, how? What? I don't even know what I'm going to say. So or how I'm going to do it. I'm like, I just didn't know. So I was like, all right, let me try and, find a way to speak to fathers or speak to people that have been fathered yeah. um, and find out the good, the bad and the ugly about the experience. So I decided I wanted to kind of cover as much of that subject as I could within five episodes. So I made sure I spoke to somebody that had written a book on fatherhood. I made sure I spoke to somebody who had, who was, who was estranged from their ch children and hadn't seen his, his children in maybe three, four years, um, been yeah. to court to try and see them and hasn't been able to, and all these things. Um, I spoke to yourself who works in yeah. the field and works with fathers that can't are estranged from their children, and yeah. I really wanted to kind of get from you um, what you can do if you're in that situation. Um, I, I wanted to speak to a woman that was raised by a single father, and that was, for me, that was, the, that was probably... I don't want to say the best conversation, but it was definitely one that I learned a lot from. And it turns out, even at that point, I didn't know I was having a daughter, but now I know I'm having a daughter. It was very interesting to just hear her experience and how much kind of similarities they were to my experience of being raised as a man, being or a boy at the time, being raised by a mother alone, and her experience of being a girl and a woman now, and wow. being raised by a father alone. And there were so many similarities and it was very interesting, and I gained a lot from that conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said earlier with my auntie when she was talking about makes you realise that a lot of the things that we think we experience are male things, for example, and no, it's circumstance things, you know? Yeah, which um, people so can yeah. share, and there's the similarities in that. No, man, I totally, Definitely. I totally hear that, bro. And I guess, you know... Because, um, like I said, with these conversations, and even Bobsy, man, man's gone off to make his cup up. Where if it was a quick, oh, thing, yeah, <laughs> he's gonna make his cup up. So I think for us, 
Um, and this is the thing, because when you get into this year, we start to have these conversations, you know, stuff comes up, man. A lot of things come and bubble mm-hmm. to the surface and it gets deep, you know? And so yeah. it's really good. And I guess kind of moving it and switching the gear slightly, um, yeah. we like to, obviously, through Lounge Academics, the whole concept of the five minutes of disrupt and our whole kind of platform is about creating teachable moments, do you understand? Mm-hmm. For people as well. And all of this has just been yeah. absolute gold dust. But... Um, in terms of the nuggets that we're leaving for people that are tuning in, what, because yeah. um, I know you're a man who reads, I know you're a man that takes in information and knowledge from multiple sources, yeah? And um, definitely, definitely is what I get from you, yeah? So mm-hmm. I wondered if there were three top kind of YouTube channels that you would recommend, and um, doesn't have to be free, even one would be cool, but if you've got uh-huh. like a top YouTube channel that you'd recommend um, for inspiring content, what would that be? Um, all right, I'll tell you for for me that inspired my content because I think it is is very specific. So for me, my style is very much conversational. My yeah. style is very much um, personal conversation. Sure. That's what I prefer, and that's what I like. Um, and then I like jokes as well. So yeah, yeah. I'll definitely say, I'll definitely say. Um, first off, I will say the first podcast that I really ever watched was Joe Rogan's podcast. Sure. Um, some people, some people are on the fence about him. Some people like him. Some people don't. The reason why I'd say um, for content creation, for my kind of content creation, he's good to listen to or watch is because he has such an eclectic um, type of guest and his format of conversation is just like a long form conversation. It might yeah. be two hours. It might be three hours, but he might talk to an astrophysicist one week and then he might talk to an MMA fighter that yeah. ain't got two brain cells to rub together the next week. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's still a conversation and you can either choose to listen to it. Or you, you know what I mean? That's yeah, So definitely. I would say okay. for, con- for, for learning sure, how yeah. to kind of yeah. speak to different types of people, then that's definitely someone that I would like, that I, I recommend watching. Um, okay. When it comes to, I think the same brother I was talking about just join man love brother i appreciate you man um um da, 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 da. What, i would definitely say i don't know if another another kind of controversial figure is maybe someone like um brother polak um, yeah yeah, now, yeah. Brother polak, that's a yeah. controversial that's a that's a controversial figure in a lot of ways um the whole polygamy thing which yeah. i I'm, I'm, yeah. it's not for me don't get me wrong, it's not for me, but what I, why, I, why I recommend him is because of the way that he debates. I, I, I like, I, I wish, I, I'm aiming to be able to learn how to debate with people in the way that he does, where he, he, he will interrupt at the right time, he will be quiet at the right time, he formulates a plan, he, he's very strategic in the way that he conducts a conversation yeah. and a debate. And um, I would definitely say it's better to watch, especially if you're on the fence about him, it's better to watch him debating somebody rather than him just talking at the camera. Sure, sure. Most people are going to get triggered somewhere along the line. Um, So it seems to me, based on the recommendations that you're making so far, it's very much linked to um, how you're shaping the platform you know, too much info, a lot of that plays into kind of ways of being interview styles and um, formats, that kind of thing is what I'm picking up on. Definitely. And then um, also as well, I'd say the last thing, just because I know that you probably, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure if I remember correctly, you're an East man, you you, you, yeah. you were brought up around East. So um, you probably know these guys or been to school with them or something, but we're all kind of similar ages. But that I no think I know where you guys, yeah. Yeah, the No Behaviour podcast. Yeah, is, yeah. Like, it, that's, that's like, just, it just cracks me up. Just, yeah. just makes me we laugh in a different yeah, kind yeah. of way. So, yeah, that. that is, that's something <laughs> that, um, that's something that I like to watch. But those, then that's, those are the three that I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's, those are the three that I would, that's the three that I would probably, off okay. the top of my head, that's what I would definitely say. Okay. And just in terms of summarising, yeah, um, hmm as a, as a lasting kind of... Something I know, this is something that you've always said consistently as part of your um, your platform with too much info, okay? And yeah. also something that I've picked up on as part of your being. 
Um, but I thought this would be good in closing, actually, as a kind of like a, a, a final kind of word for people that are tuning in and listening. Um, mm -hmm. What does no filter mean for you in your platform? Because you say it a lot. You talk about no filter. Yeah. And why, why, what does mm -hmm. that mean for you and your platform? Um, I've, I've, I definitely hold truth, honesty um, to a high regard. Um, yeah. I, it, it is, when I say no filter, I mean no lies, but always keeping at the core of everything that I do. I'm not, there's no intention to harm anybody. Sure. So you can, there are people that kind of skate through life feeling like they can just be honest because being honest gives them some sense of feeling powerful. And I feel like there is a, like, I'm just like, you know what I mean? No matter how I'm giving, I'm, giving, I'm only giving a message. I'm only, I'm, it's just not my fault if you can't take the truth in the way that I'm giving it. And you know, like that sort of energy, yeah. right? And I feel Thank like- Thank you, AK Beneficial, I, just seeing, we've been taught, yes. everything sounds lit, my guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no love, respect for love. that. Love, man. Yeah. Love. So, so yeah, I do think so. But what I would say is that um, when I say no filter, I mean that I'm not going to withhold yeah. information for my own benefit, if that makes sense. Um, so, um, I feel like honesty and truth is important. And I feel like that is the cornerstone of the platform. And that's the only way I believe that people can gain from conversations yeah is when you actually delve into those parts of yourself that you don't usually share and it's funny because i was literally talking to um a friend of mine yesterday about you know when my mum passed um yeah. they kind of saved me from experiencing like that solo time where i probably would have gone down into that deep well of depression and feeling bad I was around the man them and they kind of, it was very proactive. He was like, right, what do we need to do to the funeral? And I got into that, that the, yeah. the, um, the left hemisphere of my brain and um, just kind of very much I was on that. And then I just kind of, I never really stepped into the sadness. I stepped into a bit of loss and all of that. And then it was a couple of months ago, it was the anniversary of my mum passing. And I was getting all these messages from people and they were saying like, you know, give thanks and, you know, appreciate you thinking about you today, you know, like all the good stuff that you get from your friends and your family. Of course, so cool. yeah. And then it just made me think like, right, boom, let me, yeah, let me just take stock for the, for the for a moment. And I went on, I went on my title and I just put on a couple albums. I put on um, the Tracy Chapman album. My mum always used to listen to that. Yeah. Um, and Burning Spear and a couple other people <laughs> like that that my mum always yeah. used to thump. Back in the day when she used to thump music on a Sunday. And, um, yeah. and I, I, all of a sudden this wave came over me. And, I, and, it, and it made me realise, like I was saying to my friend yesterday, like well, I realised I'm not a robot. Like I do actually have those emotions, but maybe I, it, it takes, uh, it takes, I have to access them in a different way maybe than other people do. So my point, bringing it back to the original subject is about this no filter, is that the only time that you really get those moments of realisation and clarity is when you step outside of your comfort zone and you confront those emotions and those feelings that you, that we, I know that well, I, that I don't do on a regular basis. Yeah. I will quite happily fly through life listening to everybody else's problems. Yeah, and skimming feel on like I'm, I'm my, I, feel, I feel like, I yeah. feel like my problems are easy. Like, cool, I just get on with life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Without but sometimes now what I'm doing. Really, stuff. Yeah. Exactly that. Real so school. that's what I'm. That's yeah. where I'm at. That's where I'm at right now. And I feel like what I'm also trying to do. Sorry to go on, but um, like I said, that my friend that kind of, kind of listens to the podcast a week and will give me a message and say, "Yo," or will send me a couple of voice notes back and forth. The one thing he said that he's like, he wants to hear. He wanted to hear more of my perspective on some of the things that my guests were saying. So you can, if you go through the archive of the episodes, there's sure. a there's yeah. a point. There's a point where it turns from being interviews, the early ones are all kind of interviews, me sitting there, asking a question, waiting for them to finish, asking another question, waiting for them to finish. And then there's a point when I had this conversation with my bro and literally after that, I realised that not only do 
people want to hear my perspective, but pe- but the person who is the guest on the show also wants to feel more comfortable by being engaged with, you know? Yeah, and, um, of course, yes, yeah, because it's a and big it, thing on both sides. You have to be vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. You've got to be willing to put yourself out there for people to even feel safe, to even engage with what's going on for them. You understand? That's so exactly it. That's you exactly need it. to. So you've got to kind of model the behaviour that you're looking to see in your guests, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's why I wanted to bring you on, bro, because I feel that's something I've definitely seen that's allowed... Because like you, I could chat forever. As you know, when I was on your podcast, that team must have been a good two hours. But um, and you've got yeah. two people chatting in the same space, not good. But I think at the same time, though, it's that ease of conversation. It's because um, you enabled me to feel relaxed well, to be well. able to do that. And energy knows energy and it, it, it vibes. Same way, if you're not feeling mm-hmm. comfortable, man's going to shut down and, and that conversation will end quickly. So I totally, I totally hear that. So... Just for the benefit of people that have just come on um, and mm-hmm. are listening, those that have just joined us, obviously we're here with Chucks. We're talking about um, Too Much Info Media and his platform, talking about podcasting, content creation. We've gone into various different themes around that. And um, if it's cool, yeah, Chucks, if you could put up like your website as well. I know you mentioned it as well, but if you could just bang that in or into yeah. the, if you're able to do that whilst chatting to us still, to yeah. put that in, that mm-hmm. would be cool so people can check out your content, might even want to come mm-hmm. on to the platform to get interviewed by Chuck Still, Like I said, yeah, um, man, let me know. the variety of different guests that you've had on as part of the platform. But what I really want to do is salute you for um, creating the spaces, you know, um, for us to have these conversations and to allow people to feel at ease to be able to engage with a lot of that stuff because interviewing no, ain't man. easy man it's it's not easy so um i just mm-hmm. want to say massive respect to you man and um i'm conscious of the time because um i'm about to get mm-hmm. booted out by instagram soon you know because right. we're coming up to that max time but um okay. i guess if there was any if there was one lasting final point that you wanted to kind of um leave with people what would it be about too much info media or yourself um, no pressure about the platform. The, no, <laughs> the one, the one thing, the one thing I would probably say about um, the platform is, is that um, I believe that there's something for everybody there. I believe that if everybody, if anybody was to go, whether it's on the website, whether it's on the YouTube, whether it's on the Instagram, whether it's on the Facebook, whether it's on the Spotify, whatever platform you yeah. go, however you receive your content, um, there'll be something there for you. And um, we're small enough at the moment where I see every comment and I respond to every comment. And if there is something that you feel like is missing, having heard what my ethos is, my ethos really is I want to speak to all types of people without taking advantage, without um, using and abusing and um, making fun of. Um, I really just want to encourage anybody that is um, able to let me know if they if you if you have any advice if you have any feedback if you have any if you if you yourself want to as you as you said wanted to be a guest or wanted to be a part of the platform um, feel free holler and um, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get it we'll make it happen you know no, um, and but as I said I'm definitely looking for content creators as well so. Um, yeah, so I'm also recruiting write. as well. I'm trying to yeah. bring back pen and yeah, de- I'm definitely trying to bring back pen and paper. So I'm yeah. trying to start this hashtag pen and paper squad. So anyone who still <laughs> uses a notepad, yeah, anyone that still uses a notepad, holler at me, man. No, you definitely, so, definitely, yeah. King. And it's been an absolute pleasure having this conversation with you still. Um, like I said, um, people, let us know if this conversation has been informative. Let us know how you felt about this as well. Leave. Leave your comments, do your hearts, do your flame emojis, whatever you need to to yeah, kind of love. convey this, man. But I'm I'm very grateful for the love that um that you kind of shown, man, in coming to bring me onto your platform and vice versa, bro. You know, nah, it was an actual man. pleasure, man. I was it was a privilege yeah. to have you, man. I learned so much no, from no. your situation. You know, no, thank so you. much. 
Yeah, yeah you say you like that one. Actually, yeah, you like that pen and paper. <laughs> you like that one, yeah? Yeah, 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 of course. Hashtag pen and paper squad. Dan, no, man. Come but on. No, but, love but to dissect to select. Bro. I love to everybody, man. I appreciate Isn't everybody, man. It? Definitely, definitely. So obviously, obviously, this is just a continuation of the conversation, man. And this right here is just the ending mm. of this chapter. I'm sure in the future we're going to come back on. When this COVID seems okay. looking a bit better, you know? Um, because yeah, I'm going to lie, bro, I'm feeling a bit shook out here. Um, with everything. People are running up and down and I'm like, COVID is still a real thing. But um, with that sense... Nah, don't, be, don't, be, don't be scared, man. Just protect yourself as best you can. Just protect yourself, yourself, yeah. Buy yourself, buy yourself... Buy yourself a mask that's got one of these filters in. Is it one of them filters? You know, is it? No, you're both, you're both, you're both, I know you're not getting on public transport. I know you've got the big thing. <laughs> you done know. You done know, bro. Man's got clean food wrapped around the thing as well. Around the visor, just there. You understand? No, no doubt, bro. We're there. So for anyone also, because um, obviously we're capturing the podcast, obviously, tune into mm-hmm. our content on YouTube as well. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. for those of you who don't know um, and are listening for the first time, obviously, we've got our YouTube channel at Lounge Academics and obviously get through to us as well and um, hit us up um, for our five minutes of disrupts as part of the Instagram live stream. But like I said, bro, yes. it's been good. King, respect, Appreciate love. Appreciate you. Um, love love to you time, and the man. family, man. You know, a lot of expectations you, man, coming, man. Big things are coming, mm-hmm. bro. So respect yes, you, man. man. You know, love, can't bro. wait to love. hear. Yeah, bro. But I love you to bits, man. Keep doing your things. Love shots, you too, man. bro. Big, I love every time, man. I talk to too you. Too much info. Definitely, yeah. King. Thank respect, you, man, bro. bro. Big up. Take care. Cool, man.